reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. You must have the same attitude that Christ Jesus had. Though he was God, he did not think of equality with God as something to cling to. Instead, he gave up his divine privileges. He took the humble position of a slave and was born as a human being. When he appeared in human form, he humbled himself in obedience to God and died a criminal's death on a cross. Therefore, God elevated him to the place of highest honor and gave him the name above all other names. That at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth and every tongue declare that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. friends and welcome to another weekend worship video from St. Anne's Toronto Ontario. My name is Don Bars and I serve as the priest and pastor here and it is my pleasure to be able to casually visit with you a little bit about uh, the reading this weekend and also a couple thoughts that I have I guess you could say about it. Um, the reading that we just heard Victoria read is perhaps one of my favorite readings. I find I say that a lot. There's a lot of scripture that I really like, so let's just put that out there. But this one, there's a profound beauty in it. Uh, that whole phrasing that St. Paul has, though he was in the form of God, 
Jesus did not deem equality with God. For many of us, that phrase may just simply go over us, or maybe it will confuse us in a sense, but I think what St. Paul's trying to get at in this passage is this whole idea that Jesus humbles himself to enter into our experience, that Jesus shows us God in his humility by embodying a humility, by taking on our pains, our struggles, and our sufferings, by really living into our experience. And this is something that I think is so helpful to remember as we go into Holy Week. Growing up as a child, I have to say, Holy Week was always such a strange time for me. I didn't always understand it. And it always seemed so foreign to me, so far off, so distant as if I was reading a tale of some man going through his, his own suffering and death and, and resurrection. It just, it didn't make sense for me. And honestly, it didn't really make sense for me until I was probably in grad school, I would say. And I went through an extraordinary period in my life where I, it was a very difficult time in my life, actually. A very painful time in my life. It was a time in my life when I was coming to better understand myself and struggling with what did that mean for me in my life and my vocation, um, I had learned to accept who I was. But in accepting who I was, I also faced incredible rejection and a lot of painful separation from people. That year, when I went into Holy Week, Holy Week took on a new meaning for me. For some reason, I have to admit it wasn't quite intentional, I allowed myself to bring myself into the liturgies, into the worship experiences of Holy Week, and rather listen to, simply listen to the story of Jesus as if, it's, as if it was something far off, I began to try to imagine and to feel with Jesus what he must have been going through. And I began to take the feelings, the pain, the struggles, the joys and the sorrows of my life, and I began to unite them to Jesus' own experience. So that rather than Jesus' story be some far off story, his story also became my story. Now, I'm not saying that I thought of myself somehow as Jesus. I understood Jesus as Jesus. He is God. But I felt very much that Jesus was inviting me to bring my own story, to place myself into his story. And as I did that, the whole week, all those services, you know, from Monday, Thursday, the washing of the feet, and Jesus sharing that we should love one another as he loved us, to Jesus suffering on the cross, suddenly took on a whole new meaning for me. I knew what Jesus must have felt when he felt abandoned and isolated from his friends. I felt that in my own life. I had friends reject me because of coming out and being honest about who I was. I knew what abandonment was like. And so I could identify with what Jesus was going through at that time. I knew what it was like to yearn to share a meal with friends and to share that bond of unity and love. And I knew what Jesus was talking about. So in all those services, I brought myself to it. It was a profound lesson for me at the time because it, it helped me see faith not as some distant, far-off ideal or experience, but rather it became a very deeply personal experience for me. Jesus' story became my story, and my story was drawn up into Jesus and his story and his life. I had a very wise priest at the time who actually knew very well the struggles that I was going through. On a particular Sunday, approached me before the celebration of Eucharist. He came up to me, and I really have a lot of love for the priest. I think he was an extraordinary man. He came up to me at the time and said, uh, Do you believe you are good? 
And I thought long and hard about it that year. And when, when it came to the end of the year, on Good Friday, I had the blessing of reading one of the parts of the Passion, and he was playing the part of the priest. And because I was so in tune with what was going on, because I was feeling what Jesus likely had felt in his own life, that when it came time for the priest to turn, I was doing the part of the, the, um, of the good thief on the cross. And there's that point where the good thief turns to Jesus and says, Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, have mercy upon me. And Jesus turns to him and says, from this day forth, you shall be with me in paradise. Because I was so in tune with that story and what was, what was going on at the time, because I brought everything of myself to it. And because this priest had so personally reached out to me at the time and invited me into this, that when he turned to me to read out Jesus' line, that from this day forward you shall be with me in paradise, I nearly broke down in tears. Because I realized what Jesus was saying to the cathedral, he was now saying to me as well. It was real. It was powerful. It was passionate. Now, I just want to say this as a closing thought. Faith is not always easy, and prayer is not always easy, because I think oftentimes we have this misunderstanding that our prayer and worship should always be positive, or <laughs> that somehow we should always be somehow perfect when we come to it, or somehow it's this abstract idea. The thing is, is prayer is this honest and genuine conversation between us and God, and God and us. And the way to experience the depth of that prayer in that conversation is for us to be truly honest with ourselves and open with ourselves about how we're feeling and what we're thinking. And to share that and to bring that in our prayer. Even to the point when we may feel like I, we just don't get it. To name that in our prayer. To say that. To be honest about our feelings and not to hold it back. Don't be afraid to be yourself in your prayer. Don't be afraid to be yourself in emotion. Allow yourself to be who you are. Bring yourself into worship, even when you're feeling utterly miserable and sad. Bring that. And if you do, maybe not right away, but over time, you will find God speaking to you and caring for you in those feelings pain, sadness, sorrow, and joy. And trust me, the more you bring yourself, the more you bring your own feelings, the more Holy Week will make sense to you. Because quite frankly, our lives are marked by the Paschal Mystery. All of us will suffer, die, and will experience countless resurrection experiences in our lives. But we always know that through all the suffering and all those deaths that we experience in life, there is hope of new life. My friends, I invite you to join us for Palm Sunday at 1030, for Monday, Thursday at 730, for Good Friday at noon, for the Easter Vigil at 8 o'clock, and for Easter Sunday at 1030. Bring yourselves. Be honest. Bring your hearts, your souls, your minds, everything that you are, and place it before God in those liturgies, and be one with Jesus as he journeys to the cross and to the resurrection. God bless.